Greetings, kinsmen. Today we are working on our yurt. I've never done a yurt and it's I'm a bit apprehensive about it. But like all things, you got to start somewhere and you got to fail and you got to be okay with that failure. I forgot my pencil. Going into this project, I knew I wasn't uh, prepared. I asked a lot of questions. I went online, did a lot of research, and did the best I could. And throughout this whole process, you're going to see some mistakes that were made. And um, the best way to learn is to fix those mistakes. So let's get this started. So I'm starting off by marking my holes three inches from each side of the board and 10 inches in between. So make your mark at 3 inches, 13 inches, 23 inches, 33 inches, and so on and so forth until you get to the very end. Use a combination square to mark the very center of the board to make sure that our holes are accurate. The wood is extremely fresh and new and green, so it's hard to mark. So the initial hole that I drilled was a quarter inch, and then we'll see how well that's gonna fit with the cordage that I got. I'm pre-drilling the holes before I actually rip out the slats because it would be much harder to drill the holes after it was ripped out. You'll see later on. The plunge depth of the drill press just didn't quite make it. So I am gonna have to do it manually with a, a regular hand drill. So just pilot it for the rest of the way. So here we are test fitting the cordage to go through the hole. You'll see why this is going to be important. So I double it up because it's going to go through the hole twice. Yeah, homie, that ain't fitting. Moving on. So I stepped up the drill bit to a 5 16 to make the hole bigger. We'll see how well that, uh, that hole sits after we drill it. Checking it again. Checking it another piece of the cordage because it's not universally the same thickness. And no dice, buddy. Just gonna have to step it up to a 3 8 drill bit. Had to adjust the height of the table because the drill bit is longer than the other ones. keep making steps to the plunges. That's so I can clear a lot of the chips out and it doesn't bind up on me. Winner, winner, chicken dinner.
you could do this by hand with a hand drill, but I just like the precision that you get from a drill press. This wood was so green and wet. It just bound up right here. And other times it was just steaming. That's how much water was in this wood. I should probably turn it off at this point so I don't ruin my drill press, but whatever. Come on. Yeah, buddy. You'll notice I have a lead out roller table. That's so I can keep the whole board balanced. And I'm reaching the end of the board and I just can't keep it balanced there anymore. So I just switched it around. That would be one advantage of doing this by hand is that you wouldn't have to move the board around. You would just move around the board. Like I mentioned earlier, the drill press just didn't have the plunge depth I needed to get all the way through the board. So I'm gonna to have to do it by hand. I'm gonna need to adjust that fence so I can get a 3 8 inch rip here. What I mean by a rip is that I need to cut from one end to the other along the grain. A cross cut is against the grain. Just an FYI. This is some Teflon spray that you can use to spray on your table and your blade so there's very little friction and it's easier just to make those rips happen. Trouble in Paradise. And this is just the beginning. Eventually I figured it out. It was my power strip that just couldn't handle the amperage that this saw needed. So I plugged it directly into the wall and we're off. Getting everything ready before my rip. Don't want that getting into the blade and blow it up in my face. I can try my push board, ready to go. Not a good sound. What happened was that it tripped the breaker and later we're gonna find out why. Yeah, didn't lock down those wheels. Otherwise, that the whole table saw would be moving around as I'm pushing the board through.
Man, you can just hear that blade just whining and complaining the whole way. A lot of sawdust just getting blown up into my face. Not that I don't mind the man glitter. Always seems to be near the end of the rip that it gave me the most problems. Thumbs up for safety and remembering it in the middle of the job. Just whining and complaining the whole way. You'll find out why later on. At first I thought maybe there were hard spots in the wood like knots and whatnot that I couldn't see that could have been there. I was just racking my brain as to why this was a problem. Again, I got to give a caveat that I just didn't know enough about what I was doing to know what the problem was. But you can't learn anything unless you try and fail. I'm adjusting the height of the table saw so I thought maybe there wasn't enough table saw blade to make the cut, so I raised it up a little higher. But as you can see, did not matter. But at first you don't succeed, try trying again, hoping for different results. So I'm just backing it off from the blade before I start it again, so it doesn't start at that same hard spot. We are just almost, almost through this one board. My first rip is done, yes! One down and 200 more to go. You notice the fan isn't running because I thought maybe it was drawing too much amperage over what the saw needed. So, and it was extremely hot. It was like almost 100 degrees that day. However, later we'll find out it wouldn't have mattered if the fan was plugged in or not. Still whining. Still complaining, even at the very beginning of the rip. Some of you guys in the comments are just railing on me, knowing exactly why this is happening. And you have every right to. But like I said, I'm learning. At this point, I had to call a friend. I didn't know what I was doing. My friend's advice was, my blade was dull. That's what my problem was. It was just binding up and there were missing teeth. It just was not a good blade. A quick trip to my hardware store and I got a new blade.
desperately need this to happen. It's already been a long day and I've only made a few rips. And if this is any indication as to how well this whole project is gonna go, it's just gonna be a grueling, grueling process. Just like Bada. Just listen to that blade. No whining, no complaining. Yeah, buddy. Hot knife through butter. So that push stick helps me keep my fingers away from the blade because those reps are so narrow, there's no way I can get my finger in there without it just getting mangled. So it looks like I'm getting my fingers really close to the blade. I'm really not. I'm keeping it at least six inches away from that blade. Kind of hear it binding up every now and again, but I think that's just me going a bit too fast. I'm using my left hand to keep it pressed up against the fence so I get a nice even rip all the way down. All right, everybody, brace for impact. Face shield was getting really stifling and I started fogging it up quite a bit. Like I said, it was a hot day. And the saw wasn't spitting out nearly as much sawdust, so I didn't really need it at that point. In the end, I ripped about five boards, and that's for one single wall section. The last step of the day will be cutting the end pieces of the wall. My first cross cut will be two boards at 86 inches long. This is a speed square. It helps me make sure that my lines are 90 degrees. You'll notice that one of those holes just got, went off and that's just the way the 
the drill press was. You're also going to make another two cuts at 76 inches. When you make these cuts, you want to keep both sides of the cut. As you'll see in the next episode, it'll be essential to squaring off the end of the wall section. So you'd be making three more cuts, one at 66 inches, 56 inches, and 46 inches. As the old saying goes, cut once, measure twice. I think I messed up on this one, it just didn't look right. But as you can see, 46 inches, it's good to go. And we made it to the end of the day. If you like this episode, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell button. And don't be afraid to leave a comment below to share your thoughts, advice and questions. If this has helped you in any way, buy me a horn of meat on my Ko-Fi or head over to my Patreon. If every sub gives just a dollar a month, our projects will become more epic and our stories legendary. I also have my own merch, so you can show your love for the channel and look good doing it. But more importantly, be humble, be helpful, and be honorable.